The Mobile Suit Gundam Seed series began airing in 2002, and its extremely high popularity led to the creation of many derivative works. After the broadcast of Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Destiny ended, the production of the movie was announced in 2006. The name of the movie was Explosion Gundam Seed. The announcement was made at the Sony Music Anime Festival 06 and was covered in various places. In addition, in an interview with Junichi Sakamoto, president of Shochiku Corporation which distributes the movie, he said that a movie of Gundam Seed is planned for 2007. So expectations for a theater version of the series were very high. However, we have not heard about it for a long time, and some people thought that the movie project might have been canceled. Then, in 2021, at the opening ceremony for the construction of a full-scale Freedom Gundam standing statue in Shanghai, it was announced that the Gundam Seed Project Ignited would begin in 2022 to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the start of Seed broadcasts, and that the plan for the Gundam Seed movie, which would be the core of the project, was revealed. And now, the official name Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Freedom has been announced, the theatrical release in Japan has been announced as January 26, 2024, and PVs have been released one after another, but there are still limited details that the official has clearly announced. Therefore, I would like to look at a collection of information on Gundam Seed, the movie scattered throughout various locations. First, Story the story that is currently known from the PV is that the story is centered on Kira and takes place in Cosmic Era 75. Since Seed Destiny ended in a great victory for Kira and Athrun in the end, people are wondering, Kira is the only one who can beat Kira. If anyone can beat Kira, it's Athrun, so maybe Athrun, who has fallen into darkness, is the next enemy. If Kira were here, no one could beat him, so maybe the world would be 100 years from now? However, some information about the storyline was revealed in an interview with director Fukuda in the September 2021 issue of Gundam Ace. According to this interview, the timeline will be after Destiny. It is also stated that what we have depicted on TV up to Destiny is enough, so we will leave the spin-offs to others and move forward with the history of Cosmic Era. He also mentioned that the purpose of the sequel film is to give the main characters a drama without making all new characters, since the movie is titled Gundam Seed. In the first PV, a fossil of a space whale was shown, suggesting the existence of mysterious extraterrestrial life in the world of Seed. However, director Fukuda has stated that contact with extraterrestrial life in Gundam is not realistic, and that the setting was created to convince the coordinators of the legitimacy of their space quest, so it seems unlikely that extraterrestrial life forms such as else in Gundam 00 are the enemy. This indicates that the movie will be the story of Kira, Athron, and Shin. However, in the world of Seed, where Kira, Athron, and Shin can be considered invincible if they board the most powerful machine, what kind of enemies would be enough to make it work? In this regard, there was initially talk of having 20 fake Kira as enemies against one Kira. But with Kira, Athron, and Shin, there would have to be 20 fake Kira as enemies, but it was decided that it would be strange to have 20 Kira, so it was dropped. In the dialogue, a fake Kamen Rider was mentioned as the source of the idea, but I personally have an image of the Metal Cooler battle in Dragon Ball Z. However, as a result, the idea of 20 Kira was dropped but they started talking about the possibility of Kira being cloned like Rei. He also mentioned that it would be strange if something that was not in the story before suddenly appeared in the movie version and that they value the connection from Destiny. Seed's final boss was Raul Lucruzit and Destiny's final boss was Rei Zaburiel which was a clone of Alda Flaga, a natural but brilliant person. Therefore, Rao and Rei were rare naturals in the Zaft army, but they worked hard to become aces through their desperate efforts. The final storyline has not yet been revealed, but considering the connection with the Seed series, in which Kira, who had the best genes despite not wanting them, fought against Rao and others, who wanted a place to play an active role regardless of their genes, perhaps a clone of Kira, who has the strongest genes, will appear and oppose Kira. It seems unlikely that they are just clones, since they are supposed to be stronger enemies than at least Kira, Athron, and Shin. Second, Characters and Mobile Suit This time, the series is being made as a concluding part, 
and it is said that they try to give the characters a proper point of closure, and from the PV, it seems that Kira will be the main focus of the story. However, in addition to Kira, Athron, and Shin, the movie was created with as many characters as possible, even if they were in short scenes, although some characters were not allowed to appear. Also, the director said the character he likes this time is Shin Asuka, and he seems to have good drama in the work. As for the mobile suit, information was revealed little by little at the Mecha Designers Summit Volume 9 and the Sunrise Festival held in January 2023. First of all, it has been decided that new models of freedom and justice will be introduced, and Mr. Okawara's design is already almost complete as of March 2022. And the new freedom model will have powered up wings and will also transform. So it may transform and become some kind of armament. Also, he says that the freedom will be destroyed, and given that the freedom exploded and was lost in destiny, that the strike freedom was unharmed in the final battle, and that the timeline of this movie will be after destiny, this could be interpreted to mean that the strike freedom will be destroyed. Or does this mean that a powerful enemy will appear in front of Kira, and that Kira will be defeated in the early stages? And the new justice has not been revealed yet. However, it is known to be a new machine, so it may be a pure successor to Justice. It may be that it will be equipped with a transformation mechanism like the Savior. And although the Seed Destiny, Shin's Destiny, was damaged and battered at the end of the TV version, the director mentions that Shin will be boarding on an unexpected machine. In addition, Mr. Okawara has stated that he was surprised that the director could come up with so many winged machines for the movie, which leads us to believe that there are many winged mobile suits, including mass-produced ones. Furthermore, when the director was asked about the design of the lead mobile suit, he answered that it is a new model of freedom and justice, and the word destiny is not included. This would mean that Shin's mobile suit is a surprise, and perhaps it will be something with wings that is not a Gundam. By the way, based on the statement that there are many machines with wings again this time, wings may include not only wings like those on the Freedom and Destiny, but also the backpack of the Goof Ignited. As for other mobile suits, and talking about some of the ones he is considering in the lineup, such as the Zaku and others in that area, Mr. Okawara mentioned the seed version of the GAN, so it is possible that a GAN with wings like the Goof Ignited will appear in the lineup. The Bobby has already appeared in Seed with a design similar to the GAN, but does this mean that a mobile suit with a design that is clearly recognizable as a GAN will appear? In the second PV, there is a mobile suit with a circular shield-like armament, so this may be the GAN. Also, according to the information in Gundam Ace, Director Fukuda said that giant mecha like Destroy are designed to look strong but are actually just intimidated by their size and are designed to be defeated by the main character. So he would like to produce an enemy that can be a strong enough adversary to demonstrate the power of both sides by clashing with each other with equal performance, like the Aegis against the Strike. This means that the enemies are likely to be mobile suits with performance equal to that of Kira and his team, and pilots with equal skills. Mr. Okawara is said to be in charge of about eight of them, so in addition to the Freedom, Justice, Shin's Machine, and Gan, there will be four new models, one of which will be the last boss mobile suit, and three others. The director gave some ideas of coming out of surprising places and also taking off in unexpected places, so it is likely that some of the mobile suits will be armed from unexpected places or purge their armament like the dual assault shroud. It may also include a new mobile suit for Agnes and three down troopers pilots. Other than that, Kimitoshi Yamane is mentioned to be designing a new ship model. It is not clear whether this is a new model of the Archangel or another ship like the Eternal. Since the Eternal has an armament called Meteor on its tip, it is said that Mr. Okawara, not Mr. Yamane, commissioned it, and since the second PV depicts a scene in which the Archangel is destroyed, it seems likely that a new ship model of the Archangel will appear. Third, Combat Direction there seem to be various conflicts regarding the direction of the battle scenes. The director has revealed that they had to reduce the number of mecha due to budget constraints, and although they wanted to use CG for all of them, they were not able to do so. In addition, 
Battle scenes are based on drawings and supplemented with CG according to the Mecha CG work world. The modeling sometimes aims for a massive body shape from the front view and sometimes lengthens the torso to give it human-like action. There is also talk that instructions have been given not to make the mass-produced machines too cool. It is also said that there will be markings on the mechas, so there may be many scenes where the main mobile suits are drawn in CG. In the PV, all the mobile suits are depicted in CG, but it seems that only some will be CG due to budget constraints. Also, in terms of combat methods, Seed incorporates modern combat methods of the time, and since the way of thinking about combat has changed between then and now, it is not just a matter of creating and deploying more and more high-performance machines now. The main battlefield is almost cyberspace, so incorporating such modern-style combat is also a highlight. Considering this, there were many scenes in Seed Destiny in which high-performance mobile suits were used in battle, but this time, the production method may be slightly different. Fourth, music. The title of the music is Ignited, which is also Shin's theme from Destiny, but as of 2021, it has not yet been decided whether Mr. Takenori Nishikawa will sing or not. However, we are told that he is the only person they can think of to sing the theme song, and that he himself is ready to sing it, so it will be revealed when the official details are announced. As for whether or not Nishikawa will voice a character, the director said, let me think about it, but considering that the main plot of the story has already been completed at that point, it is likely that there will not be a character for Nishikawa among the main characters in the story. So that's all for now, a summary of information on Gundam Seed Freedom the movie. I believe that the third PV will be released in September, and I am looking forward to seeing what kind of mobile suits will be unveiled. I would be very happy if you could tell me in the comments what you think about the story of the movie and what kind of mobile suit will be used in it. That's all for today's video. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. And I'd be very happy to watch one more video if you'd like. Thank you for watching.